missed that. Oh. <laughs> I didn't even go. We're back. We're live from the 2015 Body Power Expo. Big Ron Parlo. You know, I was trying to get a guest to come on. I couldn't get anybody. I asked like everyone in the world. And then I thought, last resort, I'll just call six time <laughs> Mr. Olympia, Dorian Yates. How's it going, man? Oh, good, man. At least I don't have to travel that far to this expo, eh? <laughs> you, you were at home on the couch when I called you, and you said, oh, sure, uh, I'll come down. It's here in my hometown, Birmingham, which is uh, it's pretty incredible if I think about it. When I started uh, bodybuilding, there was probably like a handful of gyms in, in Birmingham. Nobody knew what bodybuilding was, and here we are, huge bodybuilding fitness expo right in Birmingham, so that's how much the whole sport and the industry has developed since, well, since I got involved, which was the mid-80s, really. Now, when was Body Power's first year? Was that... I'm not sure. I think it was the uh, fifth or sixth year now. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's pretty obvious to say that you being from here most likely had a ripple effect to this being here now. Well, I don't know. I won't take credit for it, but... Um, I, w I was approached initially by the Body Power team. Uh, they're, they're a professional expo team, and I think they had one of the guys that worked in the office that was a keen bodybuilder, fitness, and so on. So he suggested that they might do something in this, in this area, and uh, they approached me as, as a consultant to, to help them and to introduce them to the industry and all the people and so on. And, uh, I told them, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll do it, but I don't know if the, how well this is going to go. And, and you, you know, it's probably going to take a good few years before it really takes off. And uh, to my surprise, to be honest, I mean, from year one, it was, it was very popular. And I think it's because uh, they are a professional expo team. Yeah. They're not somebody uh, <clears throat> that's, you know, a keen bodybuilder or somebody that just has an interest and that wants to do this on the side. They're, they're already professionals in what they do, and they just transferred that to this industry, and they've made this a great success. So congratulations to the Body Power team. Well, we, we all talked about it last year after we attended Body Power. It was my first time here, the whole team's first time here. And after we all got home, we, we just couldn't stop talking about how it was the best trip of the year. Even after the Olympia was over last year, we were just talking about how we love Body Power. We had so much fun. We were treated so well. And to me, one of the reasons why I like the trip so much is because I just feel like this is hardcore blue-collar bodybuilding fans. And I can't help but think that that has something to do with where you come from, the hardcore blue-collar English type of mentality. Yeah, I, I think uh, it's probably a little bit different, a little bit more basic and blue-collar, as you say, still in the, in the UK. And, uh, you, you know, in the States, bodybuilding has been big for for quite some time and perhaps people get a little you know nonchalant they're, they're used to it it's yeah. still pretty new it's still new here and you can feel people are coming here they're very excited and there's a lot of enthusiasm and yeah. people are really really enjoying the the show whereas you know you could sort of expose that maybe that it's been on for 20 25 years you don't quite have that perhaps that kind of enthusiasm so that's nice to see yeah now the blue collar thing that i brought up I have to tell you the story. Still got a blue collar. Look Still at that. Still got the blue collar. That's, a, that's how it works. <laughs> you know, uh, I did my first contest in 97 when I was 21 years old. And um, a couple months before I started my prep, I, was, I ordered Blood and Guts, VHS tape, like yeah. way back. Ordered it out of the back of a muscle mag. And it happened to come in the mail the day I started my diet. So the first show I did, I watched clips of, of Blood and Guts every single day. So, you know, we're rolling some clips up here now. You're looking at you doing, you know, inclines with Leroy yelling at you. Yeah, good job. You got the volume turned down. Yeah, on the... no, we had to mute that one. So, you know, looking back on that video now, I know you've re-released it on DVD and with extra footage and all that. I mean, I mean, you knew what you had. You knew you were the best. But did you think the video was going to have such a lasting sort of, you know, 
benchmark setting for bodybuilding well, videos? I didn't know that, but um, the, my whole approach with, with making it was, you know, I, I started like yourself. I was a fan. I yeah. used to watch, uh, you know, the Road to the Olympia and all these other tapes where, you, you know, they'd film in Gold's Gym in California. And I saw Lee Haney training, Mike Christian, Tom Platts, and all the other guys that, you know, they, they were my heroes when I was a kid. But I was a little disappointed because I saw the workouts and, and it, it didn't look like the guys were working out that hard. It looked a little staged and posed and um, it didn't really inspire me, you know. So I wanted people to see genuinely how I trained, what it took day in and day out. There was nothing special about these workouts that I did. Yep. I didn't turn it on that day for the camera or anything like that. Um, and that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to inspire people and show them, you know, what it took to, to be the best. And um, I pretty quickly worked out what the problem was. The previous uh, videos were done by video production team. So they do it from their point of view, right? <laughs> they want to have the right lighting. Yeah. They want to have the angles. So they want you to do take one, take two, take three. And then you're not going to get a genuine workout. You're not going to do take two and take three yeah. with a 450-pound bent over rows. You're going to do it once <laughs> yeah. if you're strong enough, and, and that's it. So I got um, a friend of mine uh, who's a photographer who incidentally also took the very famous black and white shots. Peter McGuff. Um No, it was Kevin Horton oh, was Kevin a photographer. Horton. Right, right. And uh, I said to Kevin, I, I want you to rent a video camera. I want you to come in the gym. I want you to film my workouts as best as you can. I don't want you to talk to me. I don't want to even know you're there. I'm going to do my workouts. There's going to be no take one, takes two. I'm just going to do the workouts. Don't worry about the lighting. What I want is people to feel the atmosphere. I want you to get the weights in there because I want people to see what I'm actually lifting uh, so we can get a genuine feel and something that's going to inspire other people when they watch it, when they put it in, they're going to be like, ah, I want to go to the gym, I want to yeah. lift, I'm, I'm pumped up. And, uh, you know, th th what you just said to me has been said to me thousands of times. I can, I bet. Like, I got that VHS and I wore it out, man. I yeah. watched it every day. I, drew my, I drove my wife crazy, I drove my girlfriend crazy because you got this guy in the background shouting and making <laughs> tons of noise and all, the, all this stuff. Um, so that was great. That, that was the feedback that I wanted. I wanted to inspire other people to push themselves to the limit and uh, get the most out of their training. So uh, to answer the question, I didn't know it would be that big, but um, I'm very happy that, that it's got to be the most uh, popular training DVD from bodybuilding of all time. And uh, I remember watching you know, watching the playbacks when we went home, Kevin was staying at my place and we're watching it. And I'm like, something's still not right <laughs> about this. I know what you're going to say. Yeah. I'm like, turn the color off, turn it to black and white. I want to see it in black and white because I remember the film Raging Bull with Robert De Niro yeah. where they're boxing in the ring. Yeah. And because it was filmed in black and white, it had that grainy, realistic, kind of look you know and it stripped I'm, it down even farther yeah, I, I'm training in a basement in Birmingham industrial town in the middle of England yeah it's got nothing to do with the beaches of California and the previous kind of image of bodybuilding that was promoted I, I wasn't from there I was from somewhere else yeah I was from a working class you wanted the I'm, coal dust in I'm, the air yeah I'm, I'm working in the dungeon and let's be honest most guys that lift weights are that. They're working class guys working out in a gym somewhere in Canada, in New Jersey, in New York. And all these guys, um, you know, they're not on the beach in California. It's kind of a fantasy image that were projected through the, through the magazines and, you know, Joe Weider and, hey, the, you know, Arnold's on the beach with the girls and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but most of the guys that lift weights, that, that wasn't their reality. And so I think people really could relate to what I was doing, where I was coming from. Yeah, well, I mean, it sure did work. I mean, and even young guys now, I tell them to watch it. 
I'm like, you have to watch this. Like, sometimes guys ask me for help. I'm like, watch Blood and Guts first. Yeah. <laughs> you know, get that in your system. And, and, and we were initially going to, like, maybe I was going to speak and give some advice, like, you like know, a voiceover slow, almost? Yeah, like slow the reps down, or, you know, we're going to do this many sets and everything. But I don't want to watch it back. I thought, this, this doesn't need any explanation. <laughs> I, I don't need to tell you to slow down the negative. I don't need to tell you to hold the peak contraction. I don't need to tell you to go beyond failure. Because there it is, yeah. in, in black and white. You, know, you, you just watch it, and you can learn, and you can right. be inspired. So I'm not a great talker anyway. At least I didn't used to be. <laughs> <laughs> you would be in, have that in common. Now, mentioned black and white. I got to bring up the pictures. I know you've been asked, like you said, thousands of times about them. But, you know, I know you took those, those pictures on that spot every year. I mean, when, when those got out, they just caused, like, madness. I mean, it's still, people still talk about those pictures. I mean, what do you remember about that? Um, well, everything I did was very planned, very analytical, and almost military-like. In fact, to give you an instance, I started lifting weights in 1983 and I retired from the competitive sport in 1997. I have got in exercise books, we had no iPads or any, yeah. anything like that. I, I don't even really like them now. I prefer a pen and a paper yeah. if I'm going to write something down. But I've got every single workout from 1983 to 1987 written down with every weight Every rep, how many forced reps, what was my diet, yeah. everything is all locked down. And what I used to do before the Mr. Olympia is, um, first of all, I, I did it at home in, in my living room or in my garage. Uh, my wife uh, would take pictures of me in all the compulsory poses, 12 weeks out. And every week out, same spot I would have the a floor, same spot, same light. I'd have a set of pictures where I could look back and, and analyze what was going on. And analyze you can match them up to the diet. And, and the diet and everything yeah. like that. So if, if something was working or if it wasn't working or whatever, uh, with that analytical approach, I could eliminate and, or add something in and so on. And then <coughs> Kevin had took some pictures in the gym of me after the 1992 Mr. Olympia, which was the first one I won. And I had these black and white pictures, and then getting ready for 93, you know, I knew I'd made progress. Um, <laughs> and I asked Kevin to come down and like, let's do those pictures in the exact same spot in the gym. And uh, just for myself, yeah. just for my own analysis to see how it's looking against last year. And... Uh, you know, there was no instant photos then. You yeah. had to take the pictures. They weren't to filtered take, either. You had to take the roll <laughs> and, and to take it away and develop yeah. it. Yeah. So I, I waited about a week for Kevin to get back to me. And, uh, you know, he called me and I'm like, how's, how's it looking, the, the comparison? He's like, y you got to see this shit. You know, you got to see it. <laughs> so when he put them down next to each other, such a contrast. Um, in a way, it's a little bit of a false contrast because after 92, I took the pictures. Obviously, I was depleted yeah, from the contest. Yeah, you realize so you've gone yeah. down a little too and, far. And uh, analyzing the photos and the diet, I'm like, I was actually in contest shape about five or six weeks out before 92. Right. But um, Lee Haney, who is the biggest bodybuilder at the time, yep. had retired. So I knew my competition would be in my mind was Vince Taylor and Sean Ray. So these guys were anyway much smaller than me. But so shredded. I thought, you know, I'm just going to come in so shredded like a lightweight and I'll still be bigger than them. So in a way I knew I would be sacrificing a bit of size, but yeah. I didn't realize how much. So great. I won't make that mistake next year. Right. And uh, I came in a contest in 17 pounds heavier than the previous year, which actually blew everybody's we mind. We seeing some shots there of the yeah. 93 Olympia. Um, even saying that, I mean, you can see the photos six weeks out and the contest. I still probably overdid a little bit, which is, which is my way. I pretty it's much your, overdo your everything. It's in my nature to get you know? conditioned. It's yeah. in my nature to yeah. like, 
overdo things a little bit. I need to be held back, if anything. Um, I didn't need, you know, my training partner's famous for shouting and, and uh, <laughs> you know, everyone was, oh, I'd like a guy like that to motivate me. I didn't really need anyone to push me. In yeah. fact, I needed somebody to say, hey, you know, and I'm sure some people did try, but I just didn't listen. Right, you know? right. So, uh, you were yeah. busy winning, right? The, these photos were really for me, you know, but Kevin Horton sent them to Flex magazine where Peter McGough was the editor and Peter McGough's British and uh, he, he's a friend of mine. So the Weeder offices, which are in California, Woodland Hills, and all the guys then, apart from myself and, and Kevin Lavrone, who was in Maryland, were all training at Gold's Gym. Yeah. They all used to go to visit the Weeder offices every week just to, you know, shoot the breeze and see what's up and everything. So the guys knew that I was friends with, with Peter McGough, so they'd be, you know, they went to the office. Uh, I think Chris Cormier went there, um, Paul Delaird, maybe Flex. Um, I definitely know that Paul was there because I remember this funny story um, so you know he's gone there and it's like so Peter um, how's Dorian doing and you know uh, how's he looking and it's kind of fishing you know he's like oh yeah he's doing good you know actually I got some recent photos if you'd like to see them you know <laughs> <laughs> and of course Paul's like yeah let's see so Peter got the photos at the drawer boom <laughs> He said all the blood just went from Paul's face and he'd gone pale. And he's just like, with his mouth open, he's like, we might as well just give up now. It's like, right. this is just, I don't know what this is, but, right. you know. Now, did Peter tell you that or did he, he wait? He, he told me. <laughs> yeah, so. So you were pretty confident going into the 93. Um, I, I think the other guys already just accepted it was a contest for second place before we even got there from, yeah. from the, yeah. the effects of those photos. Yeah. And um, Peter said to me the night before the contest, he's like, I've never seen you look so relaxed before a contest. And I said, wouldn't you be relaxed if you're looking like this? <laughs> and yeah. he just started laughing. So yeah, um, <coughs> that was um, the best easiest preparation I had for a contest and uh, of course I think I just got maybe one call out uh, yeah. and then they put me in a corner like you, yeah. you stand over there Let, let's let's get on with the rest of the yeah, contest. You had, you had a very short day that <laughs> yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. I do remember watching the video after you know but uh, you went on to do so much more I mean uh, you took the six time Mr. Olympia and you turned it into DY Nutrition I mean you've been going strong now for a while yeah, I mean, you know, I, I retired from the sport um, really because of an injury, which was, you the know, I, I, I'll be honest, I went through yeah. a tough time. Yeah. Like most athletes have a hard time retiring from sports because it's so all consuming, focus, all your energy, all your life is revolving around this, especially yeah. myself because I was so extreme with it. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't go to the movies. I wouldn't go to dinner if I wasn't home you by 11. You to relax. I got, no, I got to be home by 11. I got I to gotta be in bed at this time. I got to get 10 hours sleep a night. It was, I was a machine. And that's why I was able to probably beat some people who maybe had more physical advantages, but they weren't prepared to do that. So I, yeah. I, I literally outworked them. Yeah, and now you're still working hard. I'm still working harder. It's it's in my nature, but I'm having a lot more fun these days. <laughs> You're living I, in Spain, aren't you? I'm living in Spain. I'm living in the sun. I'm not. I don't really do that much weight training now because I do a lot of outdoor stuff. I do swimming. Yeah. I do mountain biking and uh, and lying on the beach and stuff so, like so that. So, what do you live on a little vineyard there? What do you do? I I, I live by the beach and uh, we're looking maybe to be having a DIY gym out there so I'm more or less going to recreate the Venice kind of lifestyle because Marbella in, in Spain where I live is beautiful it's by the beach you got you know nice restaurants you got nightclubs we're going to have a gym there it's going to be ideal kind of training environment so um, you know people are going to come out and train with me the whole and, thing and now uh, when you're on your own you can finally enjoy a California style easy workout yeah, right. we call it wankers workout in England. <laughs> I don't know if you know what that means, but... Oh, we know. We know. We know what a wankers workout is. 
Man, I got to thank you for coming on. You know, I uh, followed your career from the first night of Champions you did, where you got second to Momo. And, uh, you know, the, the magazines, they really turned you into like this enigma, the shadow. You know, well, and all they, through they, that, that magazine era, you were like the, the unknown guy, you know? Well, they, they didn't turn me into that character. They showed I, it. I was They that showed it, yeah, yeah. Know? And uh, I was almost like the anti-bodybuilder, if you uh, can understand that. Yeah. Because most bodybuilders were extrovert. They wanted people to look at them. They wanted to walk around with a tank top on. Uh, even in my own gym, with my training partner that's on the videotape, they never saw me with my top off. No. Never. No. Only uh, like five or six weeks out from the Olympia, I'd invite a couple of people that I respected their opinion. Uh, Peter McGough, maybe Kevin yep. Horton, and uh, one or two other people. And then I would take the top off and they would look at me. In public, I've always made an effort to keep covered up and yeah. so on because... You hated you know, doing photo shoots too, didn't you? Uh, you know, uh, Kevin Horton, uh, was asked, you know, what was Dorian like as a subject to photograph? And his answer to that was fucking miserable. Right, and, right, right. And I was, you know. You hated I, I fake workouts. I didn't, you hated, I didn't yeah. like it. I was criticized often for not being a showman and not smiling much on stage and so on. Hey, I'm smiling now. I'm having a good time. <laughs> but when I was training, when I was on stage, I was all business. Yeah. I was, I was in a fight. I was in a fight for my life. That's yeah. how I felt. And uh, asking me to restart, smile on stage, to me, it sounded as ridiculous as asking Mike Tyson to smile when he's going to knock you out. Yeah. You know, that's, that was my mentality. So, yeah, yeah I'm, I smile a lot more these days. Yeah, no doubt, man. No, well, you don't have Leroy yelling at you, so <laughs> it's true. easy to relax, right? <laughs> no, thanks for coming on, Dorian. Big Ron. Hey, Thank you. You, you bet, man. Job. Thank you, you bet, man. A long time coming. Six-time Mr. Olympia, DY Nutrition, Dorian Yates. Thank I'm you. Big Ron. This has been Mutant.